look at this. Okay, so everybody, this is becoming, and we're gonna talk about how we met in a minute, but she's a communication strategist. And she is a woman of color, obviously, who, you know, has an amazing story about her entrepreneurship. And she lives in Quebec too, but she lives in Montreal and such an inspiration to me. And so whether you are thinking about, you know, just self-improvement or goals or building a project or building a business, because to me, I find they all have really similar things in common. Yeah. Um, she is one of the best people to know. Absolutely one of the best people to know because you've been through it. And so, yeah, we met because you even talk about how we met. You're on. You're I want on you to now. tell the story. I want you. Okay. I'll tell my version. Um, it was in January, actually. I think this is our two-year anniversary roundabout. Yes. Um, I remember, um, so I was mentoring at the Apple headquarters for, is it Canada Learning Code? And, okay, it was a teacher's, teachers teach teachers. Because I want they to have be a something. coder. In my next slide, like, I, I find coding so fascinating, but I'm not sure if it's meant for me, but I love it. It's fascinating. I find adult learning fascinating. Yes. I find teaching adults, it's one of my biggest strengths. Don't ask me to homeschool children. Yeah, don't yeah. ask me to home, don't ask me to Zoom school children. It's a hard no for me. But adults, I, I get such a thrill out of it and I get, I feel so accomplished. And I think with kids, I feel threatened. I don't know why. Really? But anyway. Yes. My daughter asked me a division question the other day. I needed four hours to study. And I was like, oh, my God, why are you asking me? Like, why are you asking? Okay, ask me the question. And then I'll see if I can answer it. And then she asked me the question. I was like, oh, thank God. Yes, I can answer it. Because you don't know oh what God. they're learning. It's so stressful, isn't it? It's, it's high pressure. It's high pressure. Ask me about a website. Ask me about coding. I'll answer it right here, right now. But ask me what they're learning um that was years ago i have no idea so she was there so i like to show up as a woman of color obviously i have no choice um i like to invade spaces that are predominantly white and i do it intentionally because i like to disrupt i just like to disrupt what you're gonna say um so Anytime learning code comes up, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. No problem. I can do it. What do I need to do? Okay. So whatever. So this day comes up. I tell you, I was like, I've been looking forward to this. Oh my God. It's at Apple headquarters. And there was an ice storm, not even a yes. snowstorm, oh my God. Oh my God, an ice right. storm. And it was like, oh my God, it's not safe to drive, but I really want to do this. What am I going to do? I am, to this day, I am so happy. I drove on the ice and I, we got there. She came down from Quebec City, which is like four hours from where we are. But I think you came before the storm. So yeah, I, well, I was still in the storm. Like, yeah, it was, it was nuts. So this is a room full of teachers. I don't know. Let's just say 20. No, more, it was definitely more than 20. It's a room full of teachers. They have to learn how to code because guess what? kids now need to know how to code and they need to teach the kids coding. So we had to teach the teachers to code. And it was like a room full of, oh my, petrified. I'm going to use petrified. It's like, I've never done this before. Can I do it? And for me, it was like, oh my God, you could totally do it. If I can do this, <laughs> you can do it. And it's in teaching that comfort so that they can go out and be confident in their classes. So then, Miss Michelle, I was assigned to you, I would get, I would say. And she was just this loud person. And when I say loud, I mean, I say I walk around and I want to disrupt rooms. No, Michelle, Michelle wants to burn the room down. She just wants to burn it down. This why, walls here, why we're getting rid that? of walls. <laughs> because of the way you carry yourself. And when I say loud, it's not that you were talking. No. It's the way you carry yourself, the way you position yourself, the way you sit yourself. Everybody else looked petrified. But you were like, okay, I got a question. How do I do this? Oh, 
oh, I didn't know this. You know, you're not letting it your lack of experience or never having coded before. Yeah, no you're kidding. not letting that, <laughs> you're not letting that be your identity. Yeah, no. You're like, I'm Michelle. And then for me, this was my confession. And then we got talking and, you know, we, we vibed, we vibed. It was nice. And then she said, I'm queer. And then I was like, what do I say? I have no idea what that means. I was like, what, why would she say she's queer? I wouldn't call her queer. And there I was in my ignorant self space. And then she uh, defined it for me. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> but that's how confident she is in the sense that in that moment, she will just let you know who she is. You're here or you're not. Bye, boo, bye. Literally. And literally, my life is like that. Either you're here or you're not. Yeah. And for me, meeting her, I was in such a bad space that time. Mm -hmm. Meeting her, I, it was nice to see another woman of color, a black woman. I think we can say that safely in 2021. So it was nice to see a black woman who carries herself. And then we've cultivated this relationship. And then now she's this bold red lipstick. I got my brow popping everywhere. This is who I am. Do you have a problem with my curves? Because my curves are here. What are we going to do? And I've fallen in love with that. And there's many messages where it feels like you're speaking to me. I know you're not speaking to me, but it really does. And when I walked into your live today, it was so serious and so tense. And I'm like, Michelle, is she okay? <laughs> like, I felt you were so vulnerable. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Read the room. Read the room, Tabby. Read the room. And I'm like, oh my God. And then for you to say it's your first live, do you know how many months I've been pushing her to go live? And she's no. like, oh, no. Because this and that and that. Well, but she's queen know, of lives know, on Instagram. I'm going to confess to everybody here now who's listening to me now. I, I haven't gone live because this is one of my moments of not feeling of, of not feeling so confident. Remember I was telling you guys how <laughs> you know, confident people who are always confident 24 hours a day. My thing was, why do people want to talk to me? <laughs> like, why do people actually want to have a conversation with me or get to know me? And so... We want to know the woman who rolled herself down the stairs I and took a video. <laughs> I want to know the behind the scenes of that. Like, what went into your mind? What were you thinking? I feel who was home? <laughs> That is on level. I don't give AF. Oh, Here we go. Thank you. Thank you for the and then compliment. you say you are not confident. Wow. Well, and then I no, saw the comment. It, it's, it's just that, you know, when people are on lives, they go to people's lives and I felt like, who would be interested in talking to me or getting to know more about me? But you have also taught me that um, if I'm going to teach people that, to be confident in themselves and be brave that I, in this instance, need to do the same thing because, you know, different people give different people different things. And so people are obviously here because they want to be. And if they don't want to be, then they're not. That's it. I think you even got, like, when I was on your live, just before I came live, you got a comp, because I don't see your comments. FYI, just so you see. We're, oh, okay. all, we're on separate worlds. <laughs> but we're mirrors um so you got a comment that are you a therapist and i actually screenshotted that and i was gonna send it to you and i was gonna be like look look what you're talking perceives like you carry that authority with you um i can tell you i wouldn't go to a therapist who isn't a woman of color because i would have to first of all define a lot of things um i'll use my judge as an example so one of the things in my um custody agreement is nobody touches my daughter's hair nobody mm. touches okay Same here. nobody touches my daughter's hair which legal case has that as a as a precedent right and then my lawyer is like go what you're talking about and i'm like no we're not taking that out it's it's a deal breaker yeah 
nobody touches my daughter's hair. I'm the sole hairdresser for my daughter. Because, you know, that's how mom and daughter think, right? Not to digress, but it was very hard for me to explain to my lawyer why that was a requirement. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, and her response was, can't your daughter do her own hair when she's at her dad's house? And I was like... <laughs> she she doesn't understand your lived experience of life. No, because yeah. she will be from swimming. When yeah. you're from swimming, your hair is wet. When yeah. your hair is wet, you gotta detangle it. It's a two to three hour process. He doesn't know how to do it. He'll never do it. And if you don't do it, the hair will get ruined. Yeah. Do you want me to send you a couple of YouTube videos so you can bring yourself up to speed? Yeah. Do yeah. you want me to send you a book? I had a book in mind at the time. What can I do to get you and the judge to understand? And she's like, we're not, we're not walking into court with that attitude. I will figure it out and I'll translate it to the judge. Mm. Like, but long story short, of course, nobody touches my hair, my daughter's hair. That would never happen. But that it's, it's really interesting that you brought that up because it brings up the topic of, you know, finding a therapist who understands you, finding someone in business who understands you. And that is what I do. Who why I do for my business. It's because someone wants someone to relate to. They don't necessarily just want someone who knows about marketing or knows about communication, but they also no. want to have somebody want who this. has their <laughs> lived experience as a black person, as a woman, as a, a woman in a larger body, um, as someone who's 46 and now exploring this. And so if you have someone that you can relate to that, and they can help you with your goals and your dreams and stuff like that, it's better than someone having someone who can't relate to you. No. And then a person who can't relate to you will tend to be dismissive of what mm -hmm. is a big thing to you. Mm -hmm. And then you walk out of that session with, they don't get me. Nobody gets me. Nobody gets me. And then this is where labels come up and this is where society starts to label you. But it's just misdiagnosis in the beginning or lack of understanding or white privilege for the lack of. And most of the times it's white privilege. So there's many well, examples I could give. Um, but also for me, it's been a learning to know that, oh, because of your white privileges, you cannot um, understand where I'm coming from. You can't understand my pain. You can't understand my pain in the sense that I can't submit a CV. The reason why I have to be an entrepreneur is I cannot submit my CV with my name because okay. I'm automatically dismissed. If we white out my name and we white out Elizabeth's name, Elizabeth and I have the same qualifications. Both of us will get called for an interview. Mm -hmm. But because of my name, but no one is going to admit it. But because of my name. Now, I'm nobody will ever out. admit it. No one. No, but you see my name. You see my name. And you're like, uh, I'm not going to go on the struggle bus. We're not doing the struggle bus today. And then that's how. We eliminate it. But when you build a business. It's true. And it's for, you know, all, all of those people who are listening to this conversation about building the business and being a marginalized person. Um, people think sometimes, or we want to believe that we're all on the same playing field. And as much as we like to pretend that we are, we are not. Let's all be no. honest about it. And I think that, what has happened in the last year proves that. Like, no, 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 not that. in the last year, in the last week. In, in the, the last, last year, oh, yeah. <laughs> it opened it up. But in the last week, again, I was pulled down. I was like, oh my God. If the same, if we did apples for apples, okay, if we did onions for onions, okay, we did the same thing, I promise you more people would have died. And more people would be in jail without a fair trial. Of course. But and, and, and I think people can see that bias, except ignorant people who 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 choose not to, even though they see it's there, they choose not to. And I and I'm not sure what that's about, but that's not for me to fix. And it and it's something that's not gonna be fixed anywhere near overnight at all. And so that's why we try to do our part your part for your community a lot of my 
Mm -hmm. platforms about and what I do is trying to build a community where I empower educate inspire and motivate because I know that um supporting and uplifting my community listen if I don't cheer for myself a lot of people ask me why I do what I do and I say if I don't cheer for myself then who am I going to cheer for if I don't cheer for black people if I don't cheer for women of color if I don't cheer for the queers if I don't cheer for fat people that is all that I am, which means I'm not cheering for myself. So I've had to have why tough am I here? conversations. Absolutely. I've had to have tough conversations that I would have never had had it not been for 2020. I would have never had. I've had where yesterday um, one of my bankers is sending me an email and I could tell that they're trying to cheat me out of something. The old me would have never. I was, I was like, no. Mm -hmm. I do not accept what you're sending me. This is what I want. This is what we're going to do. This is what I want you to add. Let me know if you can't do it because I'm going to take me and my black self elsewhere because now the negotiation power is there. And then I, I end that. And then I got a response. Sure. I've opened up your file. I've reviewed it and I'm going to, Oh no, somebody should have told me this 20 years ago. We can have these conversations and it should never be a conversation about color it should simply be a conversation about what's my portfolio and what do i bring to the table that's it period well that's what we want and that's what we hope for and it, it, it uh, you know it is so exhausting it is exhausting do you know, because... do you know a conversation I had I had, on, I had a live earlier on today because yeah I go live often um, Jared you were here and I, I think you were there and I had somebody in the comments say to me where are you from and I never answered that question and I said Montreal yes but are you from Jamaica I was like hmm you know I've never gone into a white person's live and said where are you from mm -hmm. Where do you get the privilege to ask me where I am from when mm -hmm. it is not the topic at hand? Why does that matter? Why is that important? Why do you feel you must bring me down and ask me, but where are you from? I can hear an accent. Where are you from? It doesn't matter. And, you know, I think... <sighs> <laughs> it's also important for allies to know. And so if you're in this space with us, hearing us talk about this conversation, um, it's important for allies to really listen. A lot of people say, what can I do to be a better ally? And a lot of it is about listening and supporting. And, and that looks different for different people. You know, I don't expect everybody to be marching. I don't expect no. everyone to go give I'm speeches and say I'm an ally and, you know, because this is what they told me that I had to do. But a lot of it is just about listening without uh, feeling offended feel and common. continuing the hard conversations because we're so, we're so afraid to have these hard conversations to offend people but in actuality, when you have these hard conversations, that's when you Education. grow. Education. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I love hard conversations because <laughs> I learn, the other person's learn, you get different perspectives that you might have never thought of before. And I have promised myself going forward in my life, especially after the year, the week, the whatever we've had, is to have more of these diff difficult conversations because I think it helps all of us for sure. It helps our children. It is totally children. okay that you're here, Diary. And I know you were laughing at my video. I, what made me go down those stairs? Like, who please tell. Who told please tell. My forty-five, my forty-six-year-old self to go down some stairs. <laughs> I studied <laughs> that, and I was like. This is how addicted to TikTok we are, people. Michelle's going with no bra on, like just. I, I saw that. I was like, what? I could, and you posted it. Okay, I have my crazy TikTok. They sit in draft or on my camera roll. 
You were like, I was like, she's not wearing a bra. That's it. There's I no just bra brought there. it out with my bra. I'm over 40. I know that look. I know that no bra look. I know. <laughs> and I was like, but for me, I was like, good on you. Good because you want to know you. what? How old, how old are you again? Do you mind me asking? Me? I'm 40. Okay, so oh, so you're on the cusp of really like if you don't, I'm like giving it up right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't get I to celebrate my fortieth. I didn't get to celebrate my fortieth because of oh, COVID. That's right. So technically, I'm 39 until I can celebrate. I'll be 39 for a couple <laughs> years. But I'm at that stage in my life. Listen, listen to everybody who is here. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be the reels about it. And you know this too, becoming like, you know, this too is that, you know, what everybody sees on TikTok is lights, camera, action. Yeah. Okay. I have makeup on. Um, I have my ring light. That's got the good lighting. Um, there's, still, that. there's everything that makes me look exceptional. <laughs> Okay. I've seen you in like real life. You're exceptional. Just, that's like Beyonce. That's like, you know, when, and so, you, and then there's videos that you guys see where I'm not dressed up. I'm literally lying in bed with my no bra self tits hanging to my knees, literally. And I'm talking to you guys. You just guys can't see my things hanging to my knees. But <laughs> it's just the reels of life. But I don't ex- think. I don't think anyone expects me, and I'm going to tell everyone this little secret. When I first started TikTok, I did not go on unless I had makeup on. Because once I went on with makeup on, I didn't know how to do it without makeup on. And then I got tired of always wearing makeup because I was, I don't know, sometimes I just want to go on and I don't, well, I don't have time to go put on the full face of makeup. And then you'll notice through the transition in my TikToks is that I started doing stuff like just off the fly because if I'm telling people to love themselves regardless, I need to be able to 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 walk the same walk. And now I'm on I do stuff without makeup all the time because I don't think anyone expects me to wake up looking like I do in my TikToks every day. And if you do, I'm sorry. Um, you <laughs> Bar high. You've set the bar high. I knew that I couldn't commit to makeup and TikTok. And I knew that earlier on in March, I knew the only reason I'm putting makeup on is I'm going on a hot date or I'm going out of the house. <laughs> I'm not putting on makeup to stay home all day. And I have nothing against makeup. It's a me thing. For me, it's, do you know how long it takes to take off makeup? <laughs> And I've been home all day and I just want to slam myself in the pillow and sleep. You can't do that because you're messing up your whole bedding. So well, now you got to is... take that. So for me, I can't do the face off. So for me, COVID and quarantine has been like, yes, yes. Well, I don't have is, to go I think, through that. I think one thing that people also misunderstand and so everybody knows is that when I create content, 90, I would say 98% of the time, if it's choreographed or if I have an idea out there, I batch my content. So I will pick a Saturday or a Sunday and I will do, you know, my TikTok ideas and I'll probably, I usually bang out around six of them so that that's it. I don't, every day I don't wake up and put on makeup and like, (laughs) you think I got time for that? I have a business to run. I don't have time every day to wake up and do two or three TikToks a day. And I actually don't know how people do it. I'm like, wow, you guys do two or three TikToks a day. I batch my TikToks. I put out one a day, sometimes not even one a day. And that's still a lot for me, to be honest, because my life is so busy. But I do it once a week and then I shoot it out and then that's it. I could never put on makeup and do it every day. It's, 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 it's too hard. Unless I do ones where, like I say, like I just have something that's on my mind and I'm laying in bed and I get it out. Uh, but a lot, a lot of them, I, I, um, it takes, a, I do batches and your TikToks are so fun. I need to be more relaxed like you, like you just like, I got something to say. It's on my mind. I say it right now. I'll give up. Yeah. I'm, that's me. I'm reactional. I'm like, what? You did what? Okay. I got to turn this into a TikTok, but for me, it's really, um, you still haven't answered our question. We yeah, all want to know. Bye to diary. Bye. I just want to know 
myself and I think hundreds of thousands of other people want to know what went through your mind when you decided to roll your ass down the stairs. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's talk in TikTok lingo. When you decided to turn the timer on, put the camera at the base of the stairs, run up the stairs in 10 seconds, I'm guessing, and roll down the stairs. Go. Well, I first, of all, first of all, I was inspired by another TikTok. I am not the only person who has done the stair thing, for sure. I'm not the creator. And it was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time because <laughs> I just got to do it with no bra and my house code and my own my big, my big 46 year old self. And I think it's sometimes it's just about, you know, I, I really like to have fun with my TikToks. And I hope people see the amount of fun that I actually have. Hey, Amy, how are you? What is up? What is up, Amy? Um, I hope that people just see how much fun I have in my TikToks because there has not been a social media platform ever where I've had this much fun. And this is why I continue to do it because it's so much fun. Like, isn't it so much fun? I don't know. Am I just the only person? And I remember, you know, the funny thing was, I'm going to just bait you out right now, honey. Bait me you, When you saw, you knew I was doing TikToks and you were like, what is this TikTok thing, Michelle? Like, I'm too old. And you weren't even sure you wanted to go on TikTok. You didn't get it. And I'm like, you got to try it. It's fun. And now you're probably more addicted to TikTok. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the story. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> I, you were on TikTok and I think I discovered you on the For You page. And I'm like, hell no. I knew you were on TikTok because you were posting your TikToks on Facebook. And I'm like, I'm not ready for that. That's a huge decision. Oh, my God. <laughs> Judgment Jane seeing all my TikToks. I posted my first TikTok on Facebook this week. I don't know if you saw it. And this is a shout out to everybody. Check on your friends, even strong friends like me. We still want to hear that. Yeah. We still want to know that we matter. We still, do you know, conversations with kids all day. This is why TikTok is it for me. So that's the first TikTok I posted to Facebook. And I still removed all the watermarks because I don't want them coming to my TikTok with their judgment life. They're going to be like, what's up with her? <laughs> is she okay? Where is she going with this? Like, unless you're a TikToker, it's kind of, you need an adjustment phase. Like, we'll give you a two to three week phase to get with the program. But, you know, I had that fun with it. And so with you, I used to see that you're posting TikToks. And I was like, she's doing this on TikTok. Like, she's on TikTok. And then I found you on TikTok. And then I followed you. And then I'm becoming unfiltered, right? Because I rebranded. And, so, and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to announce TikTok. myself. Huh? So now so we're the I, crazy people on TikTok all the time. <laughs> well, for me, it's I don't find TikTok crazy. It's crazy. No. If not. No, I know. And I don't, I think non-TikTokers really don't get it. Like, they're they just like, it. and I don't mean non-TikTokers in terms of you don't create content. I think people who just don't use TikTok at all, they don't see the fascination with it until, it's like, it's like when you have a child, right? People will tell you about having children, but you, you can't really get it until you have your own children. And then you're just like, Oh, that's what you're talking about. Same thing with TikTok. You have to be on it for a specific amount of time to get it. Every time, you know, I'm a big, TikTok should pay me for how many times I tell people to go on TikTok. And then everyone gets addicted. That's I don't right. know any person who I told to go on TikTok and they're not addicted and feeling it now. When I post my TikTok to my IG friend suggestion, mental health, because they don't get it. Yeah. If, 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 and you know one one thing that Different I really notice is that people who are strong IG people, and I was a big IG person. Yeah. Um, there's some people who are having a challenge going to TikTok because IG is their thing. And I think it was so easy for me because I got tired of only just posting pretty pictures all the time. Like how many, like how, like, how many this is home for me pictures of myself can i post or how many pictures do you want to see right and, and and it got to a point where i didn't know how else to express myself 
and I was trying to figure out a way to express myself. And so that when I found TikTok, I was I like opened up a whole new world of expression and creativity for me. And I love seeing things that people do that I would never have seen before in my life. There are so many people, talented people on this yes. app. It is like ridiculously insane. But I also enjoy the fact that everybody is just themselves. We all are effed up. We are all going through life stuff. And we're, we're not putting up pretty pictures and faking it. We're all and just putting on a it out here. <laughs> and it's perfect because we all relate to each other, right? It's a place where I went ideas with and creativity. I agree with you, queer fam. I totally agree with you. That's why I went with unfiltered. I was like, heck, that IG life that filters from IG. I'm not doing that. I'm becoming unfiltered. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I can, and, and I feel like we all kind of get each other. So it's kind of like, yeah, IG is not going to work. Like how many pictures have I posted on IG? You know, I don't post. Yeah, no. It's, I'll come and through it's, on it's the stories. To crack now IG, like if, if people want to, for some reason, be IG famous or have lots of followers on IG, like that train is almost gone. Like you have to be literally uh, 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 a superstar. I have a, I have a quick hack. I have a quick hack. What? Um, It's reels. Now oh, yeah, you I can know. now all the time. before it was you didn't become Instagram famous. That's it. Too bad for you. It's reels. Oh, it's two things. It's a twofold formula. So it's reels and uh, clubhouse. That's how you can feed into your channel. Other than that, Instagram itself, they will not organically feed for you, baby. No. Instagram no, ain't won't. doing that. I hope everybody's hearing that. So if everybody is wondering how to grow the followings. Some people might be just here just because, you know, they like to be on the platforms and they, they watch people, which is totally fine. But if, if you're someone who is trying to build something, um, it's right from the horse's mouth. And I agree with you a thousand percent. Mm. IG does not push out your content organically. They, they pick and choose and reels really does help. Anytime I post, I, w I wouldn't say I post every single one of my TikToks on IG, but when I do post them on IG, I use the reels and um, I seem to connect with a lot more people using the reels. So if you guys yes. are looking for that more, like, you know, TikTok, you know, and I also am on Clubhouse. You told me about Clubhouse. Clubhouse is the hottest thing right now. If oh, come you I haven't found you. Clubhouse, I'm going to get I use same name Clubhouse. Uh, yes, I'm this, this bliss? I'm this bliss on Clubhouse. Okay, but I haven't. I, I haven't. I thought we use real names on Clubhouse. Oh, hold on. No, 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 my name is my real name on Clubhouse. It is my real name, and okay. that's one of the things I'm in the middle of doing because I need to make my name consistent. Because right now they're they're kind of the same, but not the same. But you'll see, yeah. you'll see. Um, Clubhouse, I I still have mixed feelings about it. People love Clubhouse. And maybe I just haven't used it enough yet to connect with people. I think I got to fix my profile, uh, but I can see its value. I can definitely see its value. And if you guys don't know about Clubhouse, it is, you can tell me coming what Clubhouse is if people don't know what it is. So, you know, those moments when we said iPhone is the best thing on the market and nobody listened and they bought a droid. Well, you can join Clubhouse right now. So Clubhouse is iPhone exclusive right now as they go through their testing phase or their beta model. model. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to open up later, but for now it's strictly iPhone. And it's using real names. So trolls, you're out of the job there. Um, and also somebody has to vouch for you. So it's invite only. Okay, so Clubhouse, what I love most about Clubhouse is how you how much of a reach you can get you can walk into a room so a room a club or a room and literally go up on stage and speak to said speaker which is totally amazing um which is an opportunity you don't get in real setting if, if you go to an event how many times can you actually speak to the speaker not not often on clubhouse you get that one-on-one -on -one interaction um 
and it's all professional. I want to say it's mostly professional <clears throat> right now, right now. Yeah, and... so you get to you get to speak to like industry leaders who are talking about stuff that you would normally not get to speak to. And we also do a TikTok clubhouse on Saturdays. So you should come to our really? clubhouse tomorrow. We have a club. We have a club. Yeah. We have a club. I can't, a couple of I, us I can't do no right. clubhouse tomorrow because I have a photo shoot on Sunday that I am not ready for and I'm stressed about it. You have a it. photo shoot? <laughs> like you get getting another photo shoot done when you still have all those amazing photos which people on what? TikTok are not exposed to. So you have to follow her on IG to see her fabulous photos. Like your photos are... <laughs> Every time I'm like, well, um, so, well, well no, the last these are specific photo? for a specific project, and so, um, okay. I, I, I can't fair. use the other photos for this project, and so it's not like a huge photo shoot. It's just, it's like usually my photo shoots take hours, right? I, I, I of I, course, I, I prepare. I go look for locations. I pick stuff inspiration off of pinterest so i'm not trying to think (laughs) but you know tomorrow's is is a little bit more casual it's for a specific project so if you want to know more about this project follow me on ig but i'll probably be dropping some stuff here as well for sure i'll be dropping some stuff here about what's coming up and that's just life but everybody i know this is so good talking to you i have to start to go like what time is it because I'm starving and I have some things that I have to do. Oh, that's okay. But this is the I second. Got, I got out of bed. To this to becoming, do this live with you. Hmm? This is the second impromptu live I did tonight. Because I did an impromptu live on IG tonight, and now I'm doing oh. an impromptu live with you, and it just feels so perfect. Because I never do lives ever, and my goal is to do a lot more because I want to connect with my audience a lot more. And you but know, I sometimes told you videos... to do that months oh, thank ago. You, Chloe. That's very nice of you. And I and I, but I want to be like you with my lives. I just want to keep coming on all day long. Like you just like are the queen of doing lives. Because I've so... made a lot of friends on TikTok. Like TikTok mm-hmm. is the one app that has worked for me and yes. my personality and has allowed me to grow and shine, so to speak. I don't have a lot of followers, but I'm not on TikTok for the numbers. Um, I'm actually on TikTok for the experience. The experience for me has been. I totally amazing. agree. And you know what? I might be one of those people who won't have a million followers. My intention was never that because I'm not, you know, I'm as much as I like to build community and connect with people. I also have a really busy life. And so <laughs> monitoring analytics all the time and posting five times a day it it just won't happen for me just because life happens and things certain things take priority in my life and if I can't post for a week or two then I'm not going to post for a week or two and for me I like my Mm. audience to know that a lot of the times when you see me post it's it's Strategic. It's because I'm feeling something and I need to mm. talk about it and getting out. And there are times that I go through spaces where I don't feel like talking or maybe I just don't really feel like I have anything to say. And that's when you won't see me post for a week or something like that. And so as a business person, if I was a TikTok business person, they would be like, Michelle, you need to get with it. Uh, but one of the things I used to, I had a coach a couple of years ago that helped me kind of start this process of entrepreneurship. And she sent this, said something really simple to me that has always stayed with me. And I use it in my business all the time. I was saying, well, you know, I should, I have to have this and I have to have that because you know, that's what you have to have. And she's like, you don't have to do anything. If you, if you only want to have one social media account and everyone's going to have to follow you there or not follow you there, don't feel like you have to do this and have to do that. Mm -hmm. And as corny or as simple as that sounds, it really helped me in my business because I felt like I had to be everything to everybody at the beginning and be on every platform. And as I've developed, 
you know, it's funny. I work with clients and I tell them, no, you don't need to be on every platform. You, you go on the platforms that are relevant to what you're doing you. and where your audience is. And if that's only one platform, then perfect. You just give it all to that one platform. But me as a social media person, I felt like, you know, I had to be on all these platforms that I simply could not manage. Yeah, as much yeah. as I felt like I should have been on five, I simply could not manage. So then I decided to be like Apple. I was like, either you come here and you deal with it or you don't take it. <laughs> like, this is it. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. That's all I can handle in my life right now. And, yeah. you know, maybe when I get a bigger team, I'm really interested. I don't know if anyone who is watching right now knows Pinterest, but I am so interested in Pinterest and how that can help people's businesses. It's something that I'm actually learning about right now because I find Pinterest really fascinating, which is probably going to be the next platform that I'm going to try and tackle because I, I think it's really, really interesting. But Clubhouse too. I want to do a Clubhouse session with you and talk about, you know, people conquering their goals by using their lived experiences and not hiding it yeah. behind it. Because I think a lot of the times people are afraid to present them true selves for fear of judgment, especially when they live in marginalized bodies. And I'm here to tell you, everybody wants to know, people want to know about your experience. There are people who can relate to you. There are people who will pay you for being the, the, the big fat black queer that I am. Because guess what? I make a living off of letting people know no, who I story. am and what I stand for in my story. Yeah. I make a living off of it. The end. Yeah. So and if I anybody think... out there is questioning making a living off of what they do for fear of judgment, I'm here to tell you, there's always someone that you can connect with. You just have to know how to connect with them. And that's when it comes in with, communications professionals like yourself and I in terms of helping people navigate those waters to get their dream off the ground because really becoming if you don't have a good communication plan you could you could know about finances you could know about all this but if you can't bring in money then knowing about finances and stuff like that is not going to help you and that and I think knowing about planning about your communications is so underrated and people don't 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 see that. It's so underrated. If you can't uh, bring in money, it's an expensive hobby that you're running. It's I, just a absolutely. Hobby. Um, and, and Pinterest, fine, you mentioned because Pinterest. Because if people want to make it just a hobby, that's fine too. But you have to define what you want to do. That's all. I, I think that 2020 was the year that taught us that Having a nine to five is a great thing, but the nine to five can disappear. So what do you have as a backup? What's your survival? Um, we're going to wait until there's another SERP. You're going to wait until another handout, but you have all these skills. And that's the thing for me is recognizing that people have skills, people have talent, people have passions. But it's now, how do we turn that into dollars? And that's the mindset shift that a lot of, I would like to see a lot of, especially marginalized uh, communities, um, recognize that, hey, this is something, I can take this to market. I can do this from home while homeschooling my kids, which isn't really my goal in life. But let's make this, a, let me push my passion out there. We're in a time where just your phone and the internet is enough to get you to the bank and that is just power on its own and for me I live in a French city okay I'm not bilingual I speak French I will never speak French enough for yeah. the French person because they will always see me first with the yeah. color of my skin yeah. so first they'll assess me first is my name after my name, then it's like, okay, they'll assess me with the color of my skin. And then after that, we'll move down to, okay, the, does she parlay? Can she parlay? Yeah. Pa and then it's like, <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> want to preserve our heritage, you know? And then they're going to tell you about preserving your heritage. So in order for you to preserve your heritage, you're actually diminishing my culture yeah. so yeah. that 
I can survive in your culture. So what are you saying exactly? What is the end and all? What you're yeah. saying about preservation is the same for me. We're in yeah. the same boat and we don't have to have the struggle party. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting that you brought that up because, you know, a lot of people, when people think marginalized communities, they they just automatically think of a black person. Black and white. I, think I, yes. I, I want people to remember marginalized communities is a lot of different things, right? It's fat people, it is people who um, have different ability or different challenges. It's it's people who are older who face discrimination. It's it's, it's marginalized. It's, it's so many different things. And yeah. when you are building your dreams, your goals, your business, a project that you are interested in doing, you you um, have to use your lived experience as a superpower. I think, and I think that's when people connect you to you the most is when you use those things as a superpower rather than hiding them because you're afraid that someone is not going to want to work with you or not going to like you because of that and my thing is that they don't want to work with you then you don't then you really don't want to work with that person would you want to work with that person who who hates gays but you're going to take their dollars anyways and you're going to go through like you you don't and so now at this point in in my life I like to try to, um, you know, work with people and help them with uh, whatever they're doing by sharing what I've learned in my experience. I've I've been doing communications for just over a decade, but what people don't know is that I started off as an executive assistant and I was an executive Mm. assistant for many years. I've been an HR manager. And those are skills Um, you've taken. and, And so it's like, you're not getting somebody who is, just graduated from college and then decided that they wanted to talk about communications because they learned it off of Google. I'm not saying that, that that you cannot learn stuff off of Google because I learn stuff off of Google all the time, but it's all these different facets of what I've done in the past is why I feel confident now in my life to be able to do what I really want to do because I, I, I couldn't be here 20 years ago. I couldn't be talking like this 20 years ago because I didn't have the lived experience yet. And that's just kind of. I want to talk about the big elephant in the room that you brought. Well, not elephant, but I want to talk about regardless of color, right? We're two black women, but regardless of that, we're two different black women. Mm -hmm. I'm a straight black woman Mm -hmm. and you're a gay woman, a queer woman. But here's the thing. I adore you. And your relationships or your preferred choices or your pronouns or whatever is going on has never been an impact in our relationship. We've never actually had a conversation about our preferences because Mm -hmm. it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. And like, I I don't care who you're sleeping with and who's in your bed. I'm not in your bed. It's not me. So why do I care? It has, why do I care who's in your pants becoming why do I care <laughs> no you should care that it's a good experience for me that's it how we get there is not important but you know the, the thing for me why I bring that up is we should be able to exist with other races other colors other beings other sexes non-binary without judgment I've never, and for me, it it just, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when someone will say stuff and it's like, but where do, where do you, where do you get that? Where do you get off that? Where do you get the courage? I mean, especially with the internet now, it's like, so now you have a soundboard, now you're a keyboard warrior, you know? And it's like, it's not fair. If I can exist and have great experiences with you, why can't you overlook? Because we all belong to one race. And that's yeah. the human race, and that's it. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting you bring that bring this bring this up. And you know, one thing is that question that people have asked me or think of me is that because I'm bro, I'm pro black, I'm anti white, which is totally no. not the case. No. Just because I want to sell, we just have to look own. at your daughter. We just have to look at your daughter, and it, and it, let it, me it, tell you the the irony. One of the jokes that she had when she had her daughter, I would send her messages, and I'm like, oh my god, she looks like your partner. She's beautiful, 
And one day she sent me a message and I want to tell you, I felt like the dumbest girl in biology. And she just sent me the cutest message. And, you know, and this is how we have to be as human beings, that we should be open to education. We should be open to communicating honestly. And she sent me a message and she said, you do realize I'm the biological mother. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Are you kidding me? Like, it, it took her saying that for me to digest that, oh, wait a minute. But, yeah, you know, like, you're not the only person. I didn't person. even think of that. You're not the only person. In fact, most people think she's not my biological daughter. Most people think she's my ex-partner's biological daughter all, all the time. No one ever thinks it's me because it, it's impossible that it's me, apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and even funnier is that she, like, she, it's not even that I used her eggs or anything. She has no DNA of I my know. ex-partner. And people always think it's my ex-partner's just because she's the she's lighter than I am. And so there's always no, for this me, conversation. It was that she, she resembled your partner. For me, your ex-partner. Yeah. For me, it was, oh my God, she's so cute. I felt I had failed all my education. <laughs> life. That moment was the moment that called me to attention that, you know, we say things or we speak out of turn and, for me it was lack of thought um lack of thought lack of really sitting down and thinking it through i didn't think it through i didn't it was just a comment of wow she's beautiful oh my god she looks like your partner but the biology is like what the hell are you saying like what's wrong with you <laughs> anyways but, and, I just... and it's fun to laugh about it and be well, okay it. with it and and this is what i wish the world could be so much like you and me so that we all have a happy existence and there's no hate for me well, it's the hate that. Because... do we why do we always wh why is it that people always people who do not want you know who are not open to diversity and inclusion to me the question is this why do you want everybody to be the same why do yeah. you want everybody to look the same why do you want everybody to have the same values? And like, isn't that so boring? I love yep. difference. I love to know that someone comes from here and I learned about their food and I learned about their culture. And I, and I think regardless of what their skin color is, whatever they're doing is amazing. I'm so fascinated by it all. So I'm not sure where, where, why there are certain people on this planet who want everybody to be the same i'm not really quite sure why why it's fear it's fear it's fear of the unknown um we'll take for example um the hair situation i've been touched okay i feel violated and now in 2021 i can talk about it that it's violating when you stranger come to touch my hair and in another tiktok conversation it was like the black women have never walked up to the to the white woman and said oh my god your hair's pink oh my god let me touch it let me let me touch it oh my god it feels amazing we've never done that i have never done that to this day i cannot say i've touched another woman's hair. i've never touched another woman's hair because you just know, go up great. and touch it right <laughs> you know and I've if never. you were curious you would ask before but you know i'm sure you know when you were no. younger people used just used to touch it because they were so fascinated by it yeah and there was no, um, there was no, there was no way I could say, don't touch my hair or, oh no, stop. You just have to entertain it. But now it's like, I'll cut you. I will cut you. <laughs> touch my hair. I will cut you. <laughs> yeah. And Impeccable says it's a fear of difference. Yeah. Like, and, and I guess that's something that I've never really understood. And you're right, Impeccable. It's a fear of difference. Is I'm the total opposite. I embrace difference. I always say to people, I don't want, I would never want to date anybody who's exactly like me. You crazy? No. Be that I, case. I, I love to date people actually who are total opposites of me that can teach me different stuff that I find fascinating, uh, knowing that I will embrace whatever they have and vice versa. But I don't want to date myself. Are you crazy? So let's talk about <laughs> let's um so before we close out, let's acknowledge today 
I think it's so, so significant that you went live on Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. It is? Oh my God. Yeah. So oh I think God, it's so no powerful um, that we're having this open conversation. And, and for me, I want to see more allies. I want to see more yeah. allies. I want to see more people standing up for us. I want to see more people aligning with us. Um, we shouldn't have to riot. We don't have to riot if we're having these conversations and we're understanding and we're open about it. Um, exactly. I think we have all these little pods all over the world. Pods could become bigger pods, you know, and it could just be amazing. You and know, I is. see these riots I have a dream. and you're right. <laughs> it's all, I say to myself, this is all over color. This is all over skin color. Like, you really are trying to, you're really that deep in fear because this, I don't understand all of this over color. I don't like your color. You are, I'm superior to you because my color is this color. I don't, I don't understand it. Even at my age, it's, it's exhausting. Thank you yeah. everybody for being here with me on my first live. You are part of history in the making of Michelle's. <laughs> No, you're I'm not. so glad uh, I shot you. First slide. <laughs> I was like, and I, I appreciate you all nice. being here. And, you know, we have some people who've been here from the very beginning. I opened this live and I've been here for a long time. So what time did you I start? Well, what time, what time is it now? I don't know. We're all on the phone. <laughs> okay. Could you, could you, um, I started this around 9 30 ish, I guess I would say. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Oh, you did good for your first live. Congrats. There we go. There we go. Anyways, I'm so proud I'm of you. to do more of these in the future. I'm going to try and do a lot more because I think I have some really great followers just like you do. And you connected to some of your really great followers and made friends just as oh, I have. So cool. <laughs> and I just appreciate everybody like I just so appreciate everybody and you know I don't know what I do without TikTok what's gonna come next after TikTok yeah anyways everybody you up there. thank you good night bye everyone I good gotta night. go good night everybody bye.